Proceedings are resumed. Proceedings are resumed. I recognize the third elected member from the District of West Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I bring attention to the Kimanian Compass, Wednesday, June the 8th, 2016. Member, I'm informed that you have 40 minutes remaining. Thank you, ma'am. I won't keep the members that long. Madam Speaker, We need to know who is monitoring and who's doing what in, this, in the government, ma'am, because I look in this newspaper and I see $5 per hour plus benefits being advertised. I look down the page and I see salary $800 per month. Madam Speaker, we just heard where the $6 minimum was passed and you have people advertising $5 an hour, Madam Speaker. Somebody advertising $800 a month, when you do the mathematics, eight hours a day, $6, six, uh, $6 an hour, six eights of 48. You take that time six days for the week, which Barbara's a beautiful, it should be $960, which right there in blatant, uh, people are being blatant that they're not following the law. Madam Speaker, getting back to what is happening to our children. Madam Speaker, we have a major issue. We have Kimanian students that are in private schools that government subsidize by paying 90,000 every year. When you combine it, it comes up with 90K each year. Yes. Yes. They, <laughs> they are excluding, these private schools are excluding Kimanian children for learning disabilities even where the patients are willing to pay. We are giving them 90,000 a year, and when you have a child that might have a slight disability, they're turning to them and saying, you have to find some place else for your child. Some of these kids are being excluded for being behind in two subjects. Madam Speaker, we give them the night of care to accommodate our kids. Why don't we take that money and put it into a specialist school where we can properly diagnose and deal with our own Kimanian children. Madam Speaker, we would rather spend 120K or more in some instances to send our children away rather than pay for intervention here or in the private schools. If they are a little slow, Madam Speaker, if they are a little slow, wouldn't it possibly infringe their human rights to exclude them? There are social issues that come from separating them, Madam Speaker. They are not learning how to interact and network. They are not getting the cultural exchange and the sports and all the other things that schools give students. The minister and this government must have an answer where Kimanian children are concerned. Madam Speaker, we must and we need a policy. We must have a policy 
saying that no companion child must be left out or be left behind as the usual saying. We also don't have the space in the public schools. So they can't have their cake and eat it too. Madam Speaker, I would like to bring to the attention some of the things that were done in education from the last government. The last government implemented online web-based star reading assessments with all primary school students and CAT, which is the Cognitive Abilities Test, implemented with all primary and high school students. They distributed 30 portable interactive whiteboards to primary and high school classrooms, 2009, 2010, 2011. And I must say the present government finished it off and finished off the rest that was done from that time. Madam Speaker, Facilita facilitated online web-based tests okay I found it now PIM with all primary school students and PI and CAT uh, implemented with all primary and high school students 2011-2012 introduced an iPad pilot at Lighthouse School implemented national ICT acceptable use policies for students and teachers and an ICT integration policy and strategy. Significant upgrades and installation in all schools and wireless networks. These upgrades were needed to deal with increased ICT demands. Facilities under the last government opened a new Clifton Hunter High School at Frank Sound. The school accommodates nearly, accommodate nearly 900 ch children from Northside, East End and Bodden Town launched important new primary school classroom development projects to meet the demand in additional classrooms for additional classrooms and administrative spaces remove modular classrooms and provide the space needed to reintroduce reception classes opened a new multi-purpose hall canteen at east end primary school madam speaker There are quite a few things that it seems that people have not mentioned. The last government completed health checks of education system, launched new education stabiliz stabilization plan, published first progress report on education stabilization plan, developed new governance model for education system, Established new education policy and planning unit in the ministry. Established new key roles of senior school improvement. Established data unit with the DES. Established new principals consultative council. Established national professional standards for teachers. Implemented an enhanced performance management process for education. Developed national education policy and priority areas 2010-2000 level. School discipline and student behavior teaching and learning, curriculum, misuse of drugs, special education needs, code of practice, early admissions, ICT integration policy and strategy, ICT acceptable use for students and teachers. Introduced the first food health standards for canteens and government schools. Established a range of task force committees established to identify solutions and make recommendations to the ministry. Scholarship review committee, early years task force, Principals Consultative Committee, At-Risk Strategic Planning Team, Business Studies Advisory Committee, Literature Advisory Committee, Teacher Performance Management Review Task Force, Graduation Requirements Committee, Data Advisory Committee, Education Law Revision Task Force, National Standards for Principals Advisory Group. Conducted the first stakeholder review on education issues in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Developed national professional standards for teachers in Cayman Islands. Implemented enhanced graduation criteria for government high schools, introducing academic criteria and three-tier diploma system. 
implemented a revised and enhanced teacher recruitment policy and process, conducted a consultancy review of the Education Standards and Assessment Unit. Madam Speaker, also, which you were part of the last government, the restructuring of secondary education, staff and structure to all through year 7 and 11 high schools in Grand Cayman, replacing the, replacing the former, former middle high school structure, launched a new year 12 program at the new Cayman Islands Further Education Center, providing new learning opportunities for all abilities through a foundation program for resets, a dual entry program for A-level at private schools and a TVET program with a range of BTEC courses. Established a dual entry program at UCCI. Increasing students gaining five or more levels equivalent passing from 37% to 49%. Madam Speaker, special education needs. Expanded provision at the Lighthouse School with the addition of two classrooms and additional staffing. Provided every government school with access to SEN specialist staff with priority for direct speech and language and occupational therapy provided for younger students. Launched highly successful music therapy program at Lighthouse Schools, early intervention programs, and Sunrise Adult Training Center. Introduced a transition classroom to serve year one students who would have otherwise required that their special education needs be met at the Lighthouse School. Introduced new autism diagnosis services and training for teachers and healthcare workers. Introduced new counseling service for students who are a victim of sexual abuse. Provided training for government mental health professionals in trauma-based cognitive behavior therapy through a successful bid for private sector funding. Relocated the early intervention programs to more spacious premises with dedicated administrative space and therapy rooms. Developed a new website for all schools. Completed computer lab upgrades, new PCs for all primary schools and John Gray schools. Provided new iMac Apple computer lab for sci-fi, creative media, and Clifton Hunter design and technology. Continued support for laptop for teachers program, including laptops for new teachers and replacements, evergreening of oldest, oldest teacher laptops, approximately 100 laptops. Open four new primary school uh, buildings in Bordentown, Savannah, Georgetown, and West Bay, plus two new classrooms at the Kim Lehman Scott High School in the BRAC. Madam Speaker, in wrapping up, the first day I arrived in here, the first elected member from Georgetown called me across and gave me some advice. Then it was the elected member from East End. He gave me some more advice. Then the first elected member from Bordentown <clears throat> called me over and gave me the best advice. And this is the anniversary of being three years here. And Madam Speaker, I've tried very hard to carry myself in such a way that those three men would say that I took good advice. Madam Speaker, the leader of the opposition told me, we will not be bad opposition. We will be good opposition. If something is good, we, okay, we agree with it. If it is not good, we ask questions. It was so nice to hear someone call on the radio and say that they're happy that all of the arguments that used to go on don't seem to go on anymore. And my only answer was, because we don't argue unnecessarily. Madam Speaker, it is with a heavy heart today that I had to say some of the things I had to say, but they needed to be said. I will ask no forgiveness. I am not asking anyone to, and I will not take back anything I said when it comes to what's happening with our children. We keep saying they are the future, but yet for some reason, the feeling is there that we're shortchanging them. We have to get our system back that every one of us in here would send our children to the schools, not send them to all private schools. Madam Speaker, 
I do like what the leader of the opposition said, wish the government well, because if they fail, we fail. We want them to succeed because it's for the good of the Cayman Islands. To the leader of the opposition, we have not agreed on everything. You have allowed me to be myself. And I want to say thank you for your guidance and at times reprimanding me. Oh, yes, he has. On that throne speech, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for, that, for him on that throne speech, the other day you would have seen something. But his calmness and leadership made me behave. Madam Speaker, I want to say thank you to you for your <coughs> notes, your guidance, your patience. To my teammates on this side, it's been a pleasure. To the guys up in the back here, it's also been a pleasure. Thank you all for everything. And to the people of West Bend, people of the Cayman Islands, keep on calling, keep on texting, keep on dropping information in the back of the truck. That's why I got a truck, because I know all that information could fit in a car windshield. You put me here to do a job, to be a watchdog, and to be fair. And I will do that while I'm here. Thank you all very much, and have a good night. Recognized Honorable Leader, the Honorable Premier. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I move the German of this Honorable House until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. The question is that this Honorable House be adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Against no, the ayes have it. Accordingly, the House now stands adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning.